Welcome back to a very basic space program. We are currently uh, above the Earth with Dawn 1, our um, our first sort of dabble into space station technology. You can see it's it's pretty basic and it, and it pretty much ran out of uh, of energy and power and, and fuel cell supplies and things like that many, many months ago. What we're actually watching now is it's uh, it's coming back through the atmosphere and uh, yeah, it's going to... Uh, it's probably going to burn up. So, um, yeah, we probably need to do something about that. We've also got some stuff going on around Saturn and Jupiter and um, probably get, need some crew into space again. So um, please join me. Well, it is sort of the final moments of uh, of re-entry on our station on Dawn 1. You can see it's starting to heat up. It's starting to, uh, starting to get pretty toasty in there. I think it's going to... Yeah, there we go. So... We're going to have to replace this. Um, let's go and have a look at some some possible replacements, I think. However, before we start looking at space stations and more crew in orbit and things like that, we have some of our probes around the big gas giants to actually look at. We have, was this Discovery 14 around Saturn? So it is actually now quite close to Saturn. You can see it's inside the rings. Having a lovely view of that, actually, isn't it? So it's going to gather all the science and things like that. We're going to and do our little capture burn and, and inclination changes and things like that. Um, I will not jump too far back to this until we maybe do some uh, attempted flybys of the moon. So we're going to we'll just put this in the background until we do that. Um, and then we've also got the Jupiter mission. Oh, around Jupiter, we are um, we're going to try and get a flyby of Io. We're going to try and do a maneuver. It's only a very small maneuver. We've got a little tiny bit of fuel left. So just about enough fuel to do this if we do it efficiently. I'm hoping we can get a fly back here. You'll see it also could bring our, our apwaps down a little bit more. So we're, we're getting a little bit of a, a, a gravity, a slowdown with gravity around around there. And that again, that will take a little bit of energy out of the system. It'll just make things a little easier for us in future. We we are raising our periaps though, so that's not great. So let's let's get on to that. Let's um, warp towards it. Let's get this thing going. Uh, you can see we're actually focused on the wrong planet there. Let's uh, wait until we slow down and then we'll, we'll we'll try and refocus on the correct planetary body. There we are, Io. Come on, there we are. So we're trying to get this encounter here with Io. And you can see we've got some Saturn space science coming in now. We've got big chunks of Saturn science coming in. What's our actual thing? I'll have to check our science. Oh, lots of Earth science. Pertur oh, the perturbation experiment's finally finished around Earth. So we can get rid of uh, all of that. Right, we're going to close this alarm. Okay. Uh, and now we are, what, 14 minutes away? It's a very small burn. So we're going to put ourselves on the node, get everything lined up. The RCS should pull us round to it if the RCS wants to. Does the RCS want to? Is it moving? We are ro we are rolling. Let's have a let's check. Um, node, RCS. Is the RCS firing? Is it just taking its time? No, my RCS does not seem to be firing. Why is my RCS not firing? That is an interesting situation, isn't it? Does it need to be staged? Hmm, is it need to be turned on? Right, do we have an RCS glitch? Yeah, I think we might have an RCS. Oh, I know what it is. <laughs> Activate the avionics. There we go. There we go. That's a, it's a classic. As always, I assumed there was a problem. When in actual fact, it was just the problem behind the keyboard. There we go. Right. So that's going to move in. We're going to um, timey wimey to the right point there, and then we'll do the burn. I don't know why we actually put the RCS on next. We're just going to we're going to rotate around now. Uh, if we're lucky, we'll actually rotate to roughly the right position. Here we are. The RCS is going to play around with this now. Of course, this burn. Maybe good, maybe bad. We're not entirely sure. We haven't selected the IO flyby yet. I need to select that mission. Um, I don't know. I think I don't think it needs to be a new craft, but we'll have a look. Um, let's do a little bit of this little bit of RCS firing. Yeah, that's okay. That brings us in. So let's do a bit of that. There we go. What what's going on here? Why am I? Why am I going the oh because we're going into that orbit there, right? Okay. I was thinking I need to get closer to that. I don't I'm being I'm being silly. Right. 
let's take it just down to nearby and then we'll just cut those and we'll use the RCS to, to finish this off. We'll zoom into here so we should be able to see the interaction when it starts to occur. What we want to do is actually get as close as possible. We'll decide which side of the, the moon we want to be on. Right, so we're actually cutting through it now. Is, are we getting any interesting things with our orbit? Ooh, that sends us out the other way. We don't want that. We want to be on the other side, don't we? Right. So if we do that, if I put that there, turn the ASIOS off there, you can see that that has changed our, our path just a little bit. So we're actually on a, a lower a lower apoaps there. That's nice. I wonder if we could get a little bit closer. Um, let's see. Where is the node at the moment? Let's put us prograde retrograde. So put me on prograde. Turn the RCS on. And we'll just play forwards and backwards with it a little bit. There we go. Right. There we go. So I just want to tap us to there. Right. That's going to take us really close, isn't it? Uh, that's probably too close, in fact. <laughs> right, that's good. Turn the RCS off there. Right. What's that doing to our orbit? We're basically going to try and do a little bit of a... Yeah, so you see, our, our current orbit's up here. If we'd have done the standard move, we'd have had this orbit. Because we've gone closer, we get even more gravity slowing us down. So we do that. And um, that's quite nice. So if we had the fuel to do this over and over and over again, we could potentially... Um, get some interesting stuff going on all right let's have a look um let's target that's not going to do anything uh callisto what's your inclination yeah your inclination is we're, we're, we're in negative inclinations everywhere aren't we um we're not going to get it's only going to be at this sort of region here so we'll just we'll leave this i think as it is now um do that let's tap it We'll leave this as it is now. And then um, should we should we come through this and get an... Oh, now. Is that another encounter lid? So that's in 193 days. What's this one? 500. Ooh. We could get a second encounter potentially. Now that would be interesting. Because we could then use that gravity assist again to slow us down even more. And we could just bring ourselves in more. And the more time we spend in this region slower, the better we are doing. So yeah, so we'll, we'll put a marker in there. We'll put, a, put an alarm in. Let's have a look. In fact, I'll do that off camera. I'll put a, a, an alarm in. And um, yeah, let's go and do something um, a little different now. Here we are in the VAB with Dawn 2. And it may not look much different to Dawn 1, but... It is, a, it is an order of magnitude bigger. Um, we've got some of the latest technology that we've got. So we've got these these large solar array panels. If I extend them, you can you can see just how, how big they are. They're wonderful. We've got a few solar panels on the side. Um, this on the top is not one of the standard docking ports we've been using. This is the, uh, the extendable common berthing mechanism. Uh, so if I actually show you, we can, we can uh, where is it, deploy it. There we go. That allows us to have a, a a a bigger berthing thing. So if we choose to expand expand this station, we do have that option of using that. The interesting thing about it is, it doesn't have an attachment node on it. Um, I don't know if that's a glitch with the model or it was planned like that. So it basically means, if we send something up, um, it, it can either have one of these if it's in line like this, or we could have them on the sides and things like that. But potentially, if we want to go for uh, more than just a long station that uses these we're gonna have to get a bit creative um, at the bottom here we have our sort of docking structure we've got lots of our standard sort of Apollo androgynous ports there so we can do what we want with that um, in the center we have a little uh, service module that's full of few food and, and things like that we have a living space for I think it's two crew, two crew is it it is two crew, uh, so we could put two crew on there, and we, there is potentially space in there for for quite long times because we do actually have a lot of food stored. However, our crew are likely to get a bit stressed. At the bottom here, you will see that this is actually the the service module from the Dog Three that we've basically just adapted. We've taken off its its avionics unit, and and we've got this together. Now, interesting little design point on this, we've got. Um, this is a, obviously the, the crew accommodation. Um, we've got the service module down here. These are these are crew tubes that we've put together. So they are limited in how small you can go, hence the shapes. Uh, but up here, 
Um, this looks a bit weird, isn't it? This is our avionics in the center, but equally we also have a crew tube behind it. This avionics is actually hollow. It's uh, it's like a donut wrapped around it. If you actually, if we get getting close, let's see if we can get in close. Get rid of the build list. There we go. You can see just there on the edge. Can you see? There's just a, a little indent. So that's actually the the, the te technically our crew could go between all these sections. Now, yes, I could just stick a, a avionics unit in there and just assume they can. Um, and as it is, the avionics unit actually has a node on top and bottom that that these attached to. In fact, I'll show you this. This here comes like this. We take uh, this crew tube off. There we go. It actually puts together like that. And then what we do is we move this down. We move this tube down, and it's it just creates the the. the in my mind, it's the way, the best way to represent it. Um, obviously, down here, this crew tube, we have a little bit of um, fuel for our RCS, but this does not have propulsion on its own apart from RCS. This is its only propulsion unit. So as soon as this is gone, this thing is in orbit and it is not moving. It's not changing its orbit. Not like Dawn One, which had its own little thruster packs, sort of around. Uh, would be be around here. We had a couple of thruster packs. Yeah. Because we are, we've got docking ports at both ends, and we've got this this docking arrangement here. We're not going to do that. Um, we're going to try and launch this up on an, an. I was going to say a new vessel. It is one of the javelins. It's just been modified a bit, um, which is also going to be used for a couple of other missions I have in mind. But you'll see it. It's it's a, it'll stand out. It, it'll stand out. Um, it does take a while to build this. The the craft is actually going to take about hundred and. I don't know how many days. It's it's not it's not quick. Um, so we're going to go back to um, to Saturn because I think we may have some sort of encounter on the way. Well, here we are around Saturn, and we have uh, we've got a maneuver I want to do. I want to try and bring um, our craft. I, originally, I was going to aim to try and get a an encounter with Rhea and then Dion and work my way in. However, it it, it hits me that actually. We, Getting an encounter with something like Rio, Dion, things like that, it will take a lot longer. They've got a, a bigger orbit. I was tempted to go after Titan. We're not going after Titan. Um, what we are going to go for is we're going to go for, uh, for Mimas, uh, which I believe is the innermost. Yeah, it is the innermost moon. We're going to take the innermost. Then we're going to try and maybe go for uh, was it Enceladus. And then we'll maybe try and go for Tethys. And then we'll work our way out if we can. Or we'll just see what pops up. So we've got a maneuver that's going to be a little bit of delta V, so it's 70 meters per second. It's not too bad. Should get us that encounter. Um, we'll have a look at that once we've got it and, uh, and plan ahead. So let's get this maneuver underway. It's it's in it's in 33 days, but actually we've we've got you know quite a while until other stuff. We've got mate one that's going to happen in 130 days. We do have two two crewed missions that I could launch at any time, but I'm holding off until we have the dawn craft in space because the dawn station up in space dawn two, um, primarily because I want to practice docking. Um, and uh, I would like them to to potentially have a little bit of an attempt at docking and see how maneuverable they are. Plus, also, they have that uh, mission module on the top, and I'd like to actually add that as space to the to the dawn station because it currently lacks space. You can tell when we've just seen that it only has space for two people, and it's a bit cramped. So I thought, you know, if we're going to put them up in orbit anyway, we might as well leave some space up there. Might be a nice idea. All right, let us warp towards this. And, uh, and see what we can do regarding we spinning around. You see that goes round very quickly around there, doesn't it? Um, what we're going to do is we're going to get ourselves up into the point where we need to, and uh, that's possibly why we get nice encounters with this. If we were trying to get an encounter with uh, with Rhea, for example, it takes a long time to go around. So, um, so you've got to be quite you've got to be quite careful with how you're going to do it. Um, let's have a look. We're going to close that. And uh, we are going to prepare ourselves. We've got about nine minutes, so we can we can move forward a bit. We we should have signal. Yeah, we do. We're, we're far enough away from Saturn that we should have signal. Even if we didn't, I think uh, Mechjeb would take over and do it for us. Um, I'm saying that. Now I was tempted to go for for uh, was it La Iapetus, but uh, I am not doing that. Oh, we've gone past. Uh oh. Mm, it's talking, talking again, causing the problems. Okay, we're just gonna do that. Get the RCS on. We'll see if we can still ca capture uh, on this. We, we should be able to. It's not a, it's not a difficult sort of situation. Let's uh, fire that. We'll burn everything until we've got zero meters per second on the on the marker, and then we'll have a look and play around, see what we can do, see if we can get any encounters and things like that. 
and we may have gone a bit too far. It's, it's not it's not terrible. It's not terrible. We can, we, we're going to have to do a little bit of refining to that now there like that. And then we're just going to kill it there. Right. We use a bit of RCS to bring it in. Right. Come on. Are you going to show up at some point? There we are. Right. Okay. What's that? Yeah, right. So that's going to be on one side of it. What's that doing to our orbit? We want to decide which side we're coming in. It's doing pretty much nothing. This is such a small moon that that is doing pretty much nothing. So let's just get this closer. Let's have a look. So our current apoapsis is uh, 3.38 and that one is 3.3895. It's actually gone up. <laughs> let's, um, let's pop to the other side of that moon i think i think if we come in this side that's the exit isn't it we come in like that we're gonna we're gonna see stuff a little bit better maybe um so we'll do a little bit of just put it all the way through to the other side hello come on there we go a little bit you know, i don't know why you choose to save at that point there we go all right we are a little high on it is that going to kick us at all that's the question i don't think it is is it um one two eight Oh, yeah, that's actually taking a little bit out there, but not much, not much in the way of Delvey. Right, so then let's target the next one. So after this, we get that encounter is terrible. Okay, what we can do is I can put a marker there and then we do a little trick, which is you just do that. And you can, you can see where things are going to be. Yeah, we're not going to get one for a while. So that one's, that one's, that one's going in the bin. All right. Next, uh, let's have a look. What about Tethys? Okay, set that as target. Our inclination isn't too bad on Tethys, actually. So we'll put a little marker there, and then we'll do a little... Uh, there's an encounter, closest encounter there, but where are we when that happens? Hello? Uh, we are, we are, we're frozen again. Okay. Right, okay. Now we're just going to... It's going to move around. Oh, no, that's not a bad one. That's not bad at all. That might be something we could work with. Uh, so, yeah, let's have a look at that one. Okay. So, we know what we can do that. What we could do now is we can actually put a manoeuvre up here. And we can go, right, okay, where, where was that Tethys one? Was that it? Oh, hello. What was that over there, actually? How close was that one? Oh, that, that map potentially is nicer, isn't it? Um, so let's see. Let's see if we can... What would that require? A little bit of finagling, I think. Um, let's do a little finagle. Uh, let's go... Okay, that's doing something. It's going to take a little bit. But not bad. Getting closer. There we go, we'll get a Tethys encounter for 56. Okay, so we're going to leave that one there where it is because that's a nice marker for when we go uh, past past uh, Mimas. Uh, so we could get potentially a Tethys. That's going to pop that up a bit. And it's also going to uh, sort of widen out our, our path there. So that's good. So we have a eight days until the Mimas encounter. And then when's that one? That would be... 90 days from now. Okay, so I think, do we have a craft ready to launch is the question, or do I'm, am I going to go forward? We, we're going to wait on the Dawn craft, so we, we can go and actually have a look at, I think, this, this Mimas uh, encounter. So let us, let's go, uh, let's go forward in time. Let's, let's, uh, yeah, let's do that. We know we can do that uh, there, so we're just going to get rid of it. Um, Right, let's go forward in time a little bit until we get to the Mimas encounter. And we should see the craft is, yeah, the craft's coming around now. So we're, we're quite tight on, on Saturn, actually. It's not a bad orbit we've got into. Um, could have been a lot worse. And you can see we're, we're actually focusing on Tethys. So we, need to, we need to focus on, yeah, there we go. Thank you. And actually, you know what we're going to do. We're actually going to uh, set that as target. There we go. Right. So the encounter is in six days. So you can see Tethys moving around, sorry, Mimus moving around there. We should be coming across here at some point. 
Let's have a look. Where are we? Is it going to get another orbit? It might actually. I didn't think it was going to be that quick. Uh, that's slow actually. That's so we're we're taking our time coming in. We're going to get quite a lot of speed up, I think. What are we looking like for resources? Uh, our electric charge is special, isn't it? Um, we're still doing a lot of science. How long is that going to take? Years. Okay. Um, Let's have a think. Do we? Is it still doing its charging? Yeah, it is, isn't it? It's, it's still doing its low power, high power. Good. Okay, that's that's fine then. Uh, red low, red low, EV out, EV out. Right, that's it. Come, come, come back. There we go. So that's why it's flickering on and off. So we could manually, we could manually change it to just uh, to do that. Right, you can see it's approaching at speed now. It's going to get faster and faster and faster. Now, the issue we may have is that, uh, let's have a look. Wow, 1,000 science has been gathered by that. You are still transmitting. That's going to transmit for absolutely ever, isn't it? Uh, what we got to data, um, those are all stopped. Magnetic scanner just stays on because it. one of the issues with this is it turns things off, um, but... And I think it's because the magnetic scanner has to unfurl itself to actually start working. So it doesn't get sort of included in the whole process. Um, because you can see we are now currently in low power mode. We're not quite back to, to where we want to be. All right. Let us see. I am tempted to... Yeah, it's going to do low power mode there. I'm tempted to actually put it into low power mode as it is. Um, let's see how it goes. We're going to be in the sunlight... I think, when we do it. But we don't need that because we have, of course, nuclear powered. I've just remembered. That's terrible. All right. I don't know actually how long this episode's going to go on for because I've been doing quite a bit in the background and, of course, not been timing because, you know, that's the way we work. Um, let's have a look. Let's see. We're getting we're getting close enough. So this is the past. This is the one where we're going to get this interaction. Um, we are charging up now. This might be perfect timing or it might go horribly wrong. We'll see. Yeah, I think it's going to be horribly wrong. There we go. Oh, it just does the, the surging, surging. I'm actually going to force it. I don't have signal. <laughs> of course I don't. Of course, the one time. Oh, actually, you know what? How long have I got? 30 minutes. 30 seconds. No, 30 minutes. Um, We're going past a, a, a planet, a uh, moon, and we haven't actually taken the mission. I better go and check the missions available. Right, we've got IO that's about to happen, so we might as well take you. And then we've got uh, Mimas. There we are, Mimas. Oh, that's going to give us a lot of funds, actually. Got to get below 390 kilometers. Ooh, need to check that. I need to also check the IO one, thinking about it. Where's the, what's the altitude required around IO? 7,000 kilometers. I think we were close enough for that. Um, right, let's go... Um, Let's go fly past Mimas and hope that we're in 390 kilometers or lower. An interesting thing just popped up because I have this where it automatically sets where the timers are. You can see that, um, yeah, the flyby of IO is a lot less time requirement than Mimas. Is that just, I suppose they are originally designed for you to take before the craft launches. Now, does it need to be a new craft? Um, because I didn't check that. So that could cost us a lot of money. Um, we'll, we'll see. I mean, it's, 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 if it costs us money, it costs us money. It, 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 the way it is, I forgot to look at it. So it, note to self, or note to you, always check before you uh, before you accept a contract if you've got something like that going on. Right. So let's have a look what we're looking like for electric charge. It is going up, but I have a feeling it's going to start going down again very soon. Uh, it's almost up at max. I suppose it can't transmit currently, can it? Okay. Oh, no, it can. It can do the bad things. Right. Okay. So I'm going to have to manually, I'm going to have to manually get this going. Right. Do we have enough to actually turn the equipment on? Yeah, I'm going to manually turn all of the stuff on. I don't know how long we're actually in the sphere of influence. Uh, 15 minutes, 40 minutes. I think literally we are getting uh, like five seconds of science. And it, I wonder whether it will actually class that. Um, let's do this. Uh, let's do the focus view. How close am I getting to you? Oh dear. That's, uh, let's, um, <laughs> let's 
Oh dear, that's an impact. Um, is that a time warpy glitch? I think that is. Um, right, we need to we need to act reasonably quickly. Uh, add maneuver. Right. Um, that's going to have to work, isn't it? Yeah. How much is that? Oh, that's a lot. That is a lot of pushing sideways. What's that going to do to everything we've got going on right now? Uh, nothing. Uh, it brings our apoapsis down. Okay. It's not. A, it's not a terrible one. Um, get me onto the node, please. We're just going to fire the engines there and just get ourselves out of this situation. So that is, I probably imagine, either a floating point issue or timey wimey warpy messed up a bit. Um, so he's going to force this out. Do we get an electric charge from running our engines? No, we don't. That's annoying. Um, let's have a look. Come on. We, we, what we would, I would love to do is actually just skim it, but I have a feeling I don't want to risk it any more than this is, is risk. That is very low to be fair. That's what seven kilo, that's seven. Yeah. That's seven kilometers up. That's, um, that's tight. And we're also in the dark because we're in the dark of Saturn, which is horrendous. So we're actually under there, but we've got a pair That's interesting. We're just going to do that. There we go. Right. I'm going to end that there. Perfect. I think we're going to miss the planet, the moon there. If the moon has a high mountain, we're going to hit it. But hey, there's uh, there's many ways to to die on this in this game out there. All right. Let's have a look. What are we looking at? Eleven minutes to encounter, and then it doesn't actually tell me how long the encounter. So it's eleven minutes forty three and forty two. Wow. Is it literally like a one second encounter? I think it is. I think we're literally going to get a flyby encounter of, of doom. Okay. That's fine. I, I, I expected it to be a short time. I didn't expect it to be that short of a time. So from there, 721, 754. Okay, so we've got about a minute. We have about a minute. So then we have to start thinking, what's the, uh, what's the implements that I want to fire up? Um, we do have signal now. Um, what equipment do we want to start up? I think I want to start everything. I think I want to start everything, but have any, if it doesn't allow me the, uh, the science data thing, I will just, I'll just give it to us because yeah, this, this, this is an encounter. You'd be firing your cameras off like crazy, wouldn't you? Um, do that. Turn the RCS off. I think that's probably what's triggered us in the past. Yeah, I think the RCS firing previously when we've actually slowed down and due to time warp is probably what has caused us a problem in the past. Right, so we're now going to start. Let's have a look. Have we got electric charge? We do, right? We're going to start all of this stuff. Just get it all started, please. Just gather, gather the stuff. Are you on? Are you coming on? Come on. Target switch switching locked. Okay, I don't know what that means. I don't know what we've done. Right, we are gathering data, of course. Um, wow, this is uh, where where are we? Yeah, there we are. What's that? No, oh, way low. Wow, that's that's low. That is very low. Oof, that was that was tight. That's that is that is cool. Yeah, that is cool. Right, that was a that was a flyby and a half. We do not have signal, so I can't check anything. Right, and then we're going to come back out the other side. Have we completed any mission for this? So we have gone below that. Uh, we've got to transfer science data from space near Mimas. Okay, right, we're back out now, and we have signal again. So Mimas was actually blocking our signal. Brilliant. Right, uh, what have we got? Um, we're going to do. We're going to turn this back. Oh, that's on waiting, so info. Right, what data have we got? We've got Mimas space, yeah. Is it gonna transmit? No, because we don't have data at the moment. Um, so what we need to do, actually, let's check what else have we got going on. Uh, missions, we have uh, Mate is gonna be coming in, and then we've got the Jupiter one, right. I was gonna launch the Dawn station on this one. In fact, you've seen it be, you've seen the build of it. Um, but I don't think that's going to happen looking at what's going on. I think 
we're actually going to be playing around with the outer planets for the rest of the, um, the thing and possibly having near to arrive right let's think so we've uh, we've thought about let's just let's just check um all of them from now on like that that's we don't go far enough out to get that how do we get are we now below the orbit of you know, peters i don't even remember putting it that way in there right set us target are we getting any encounters with you that's the question um no there are no there are no there are no encounters ever with you so we'll just get we'll get rid of that get get rid of that thank you right next um let's think we've got we've got mimas so we're going to go back to this set target we're going to put a marker up here and then we're going to just do what we've done before we're going to swipe through them and see if there's any encounters that's not a terrible thing why can't i roll hello this is a new glitch isn't it this is a new glitch not being able to roll inwards can i do i do i have to come off oh yes you can't you can't zoom in and out when you've got the no this is this a new a new one is this is this the way it's supposed to be right there's a sort of encounter there not really there not really there not really there yeah we're, we're sort of in a, a resonance almost with it aren't we yeah i mean those are those are miles away so let's let's not worry about that uh let's go tethys set as target right this is the one we had um I said, and this is why i got rid of the, the maneuver node we had some sort of an encounter with there we go that's now going to be in 114 days okay um yeah, we had an encounter with that, but um, hello, can I can I, I want to get off that plate? Please let me let me off. I don't want to do anything with the. I don't want to do anything with the Nord. Thank you. Why is it? See, this is the this is the thing that annoys me. There we go. Right. Thank you. What I want to do is look at this now and go, right, can we get a close approach? So we're going to pull this in and do a little bit of, um, let's think. Is that right? Yeah, there we go. So we're going to, we're going to just pull that down. Um, we're going to try and position ourselves to do this. You know, so oh, that's too far. Come back, come back, come back. There wasn't, a t there wasn't, a, there was an encounter there. This looks as though it might be easier than the Mimus encounter. So we're going to bring it in. There we go. Okay. So now we were actually are going to uh, focus you. All right. How long is that going to be? So that's 12.43, 12.36. So it's going to be a little bit of time. Okay. So that's not a terrible one. So that, that is a bigger, it's a bigger moon. Um, that does that. There, right. So. We know we need to have that maneuver, but we're gonna we're gonna play around with it once we get there, um, and it's gonna be seventy five. So we're gonna we're gonna add that to our our thing. We're gonna go ten minutes before because that's the best way of doing it. Add that alarm. Hello, thank you. And that's gonna be after the Jupiter one, and both of those are after mate. So yeah, I think we're gonna see the mate arrival at Mars first. Um, I don't know how many days it's gonna take to get anywhere near it. Once Maid arrives at Mars, however, I think uh, Dawn, well, Dawn 2 will actually be ready before the, the, the Maid mission. So actually, we are going to launch Dawn 2. Yeah, um, we're going to also spend some points. And we're also going to maybe go and have a look at our research facilities. All right, you can see that we're actually currently researching large Hydrolox engines. Um, I, don't, I don't remember why I'm actually researching large Hydrolox engines. Where are we? Oh, there we are, large Hydrolox engines, because we can operate the RL-10 and the J-2, but we're not actually using that. Now I've got more J-2 configs there. Well, that's an, a sustainer upgrade. How exciting. Um, yeah, we have we have 1,500 science to spend, um, and we, of course, now can, can spend some of the higher stuff. And I'm tempted to get the space shuttle bits. I mean, is that a good idea? Is that a bad idea to build the space shuttle? Passenger module? Cargo bit? Cargo bit, cargo bit. Mm, I've never really done spatial, if I'm honest. Um, I suppose I'd need tail parts and things as well. Ooh, I suppose I could go for not that. Um, well, yeah. What have we? What have we got? That, that do I need anything from over here? That's cargo bits for like spacey planey bits. Airliner fuselage, the Boeing. Okay, so you know what? Let's. 
Let's get that. Um, I don't technically need those bits. I do want to get early space station stuff because we may want to start build bigger structures. Um, can I get you? No, because I can only go up to 200. Uh, what's that specialist space control? We get the R40, which I've never used, and we get an RCS upgrade. We'll have that. Uh, down here, we've got improved landing. Yeah, I'll have that. And more landing. We've got improved what's that lunar rated heat shields of different sizes well we'll take those i'm just going to work my way down now i think i think that's what's going to happen uh we've got some oh the m1 engine and that we'll have have a bit of that and then what have we got here the ht3 that's supposed to be quite good if i remember rightly the m1 c level and then we've got some some other upgrades and that's that line done uh, we've got this with, let's have a look, uh, some interesting stuff. Let's turn our sustainery, our, our stage combustion. Uh, we'll get that. I don't know if I'm ever going to use it, but there's a lot of upgrades there, isn't it? NK43, NK39. Um, yeah, we'll have that. Oh, we can still go, can we? Oh, that's exciting. Oh, and that feeds into uh, Hydrolox, which gives me... Oh, yes. I think we'll definitely have you... And then we'll have um, the RD8, RD1, yeah, we'll have that. We've only got 80-something left now, so prototype nuclear reactors. We could, we could, that looks like a nuclear engine. Yeah, it is. It's not a prototype nuclear reactor at all. But you know what? We could give it a try. I've never launched one. Let's try, let's try it. We just send a, we'll do a test mission. And then we've got early nuclear propulsion after that, which would be interesting to look at. Right, that's all the science spent. Probably not on the best items, but we're at that point in the in the, in the series where it doesn't really matter because um, we're just going to try new things. I think in the in the future. All right, I am going to warp forward to dawn three being ready, get it on the pad, and we can uh, we can get it into orbit. Hopefully, welcome to the launch pad, and you can see something that looks a little different. It is uh, it's it's it is a javelin, but it's 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 orangey, yellowy, golden color. What's going on there? Yeah, it's um. It's our biggest javelin craft, but we've modified it. We've actually taken off the third stage. We've taken off, I think, yeah, we've taken off the third stage. We've made the second stage bigger. We've put a new, um, we've put out what you've seen. We've put our little jumper stage in, in there as well to give it a fine little push if needed. Um, this has actually been developed for the dog program for dog 3c which you will see in the near future because the this fairing is actually designed for that as well um, and you may be thinking to yourself but the dog craft is not that big you will see um you'll see why it needs such a big fairing um probably in the next episode or the one after that but um yeah it, it, it it's an interesting one so we were going to try and put this into the uh the same inclination as the moon just because i, I wanted you know i might as well um uh, we might as well do that. We might as well get the craft uh, sort of ready, the crew ready and things like that for, for sort of lunar sort of or launches and things. So there we go. We do have a bit of sun coming across the, the ground. We do also have a problem with the fairings, which have been for some reason put all the way up there. So we're just going to gonna put those there. That's that there. I don't know where that is. That's probably going to fire about there, I think. Right. Let's, uh, let's hope that there's nothing else wrong with the staging of this. We've got the big first stage very noisy get that going decouple and off we go these are good everything is good we're going to uh, we're going to we're going to just put ourselves up into the next time of a racket because we're going to try and get this launch done reasonably quickly um i don't know what orbit i want to put this in actually i'm thinking 250 300 would be nice it's it's not in the radiation belt um if i do that i think if i if i put it any higher than that we risk irradiating the crew whenever we actually do anything with them so there's that also if i put it up around 300 that tends to be like a pair of apps that we, we want our crew to do missions around so it would make uh rendezvous and thing potentially easier in the future if we had missions where we need to do things like that um i have not selected a mission for putting up a new space station um i probably should have done that i should have looked for it um we just you know this is we don't really need the fund for this. This is more of a okay, testing some ideas and, and, and things like that. And I have done a terrible launch profile with this. This is horrendous. I've been too busy talking on the microphone to you lot to actually focus on my launch profile. I'm not even looking at the uh, the you know, predicted altitudes and things like that. Let's get this down. This, you know what? This is. I forgot. This this first stage actually has an awful lot of kick to it now because we've taken that third stage off. 
and just stretch the second stage. There we go. Um, it is, um, it's a bit juicy, it's a bit powerful. There we go, that's nice. Um, this thing, this thing can just, we're gonna put it on zero actually. Um, are we? Yeah, we are. No, we're gonna, we're gonna put it on. We're gonna put it up a bit. Now, um, I launched at my usual, you know, two degrees before the moon situation, or two degrees when the moon's relative inclination is about two degrees off. Um, I don't know if I actually needed to do that. Um, this, this, this might be a, let's get rid of the fairings, there we go. Um, this might be a craft that doesn't need to do that because it has an awful lot of grunt. You can see already it's 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 thrust to weight ratio is, is 1.5. It's max thrust to weight ratio is seven. Now that that is a concern for crew missions, but we will see. Uh, you can see we've got uh, almost just under 5,000 meters per second on this stage. This is you know this is a reasonably heavy station. It's actually I think it comes in at you know 15 tons or something like that. Plus this bit here maybe 16 tons. So this can put quite a big mass up into uh, into Earth's sphere of influence. Um, well, we think it can. We've not actually done it yet, so you know we, we should probably not cap out chickens and things like that. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll, we'll get this thing up there, and then this will probably put us into the orbit that I want to be in finally when we're finished. I think it's probably going to be the, the plan. Right, so we're just going to bring it on up there. Um, I, do I want to level out now? I think I do. I think I want to. I want to go to zero pitch uh, because the thrust on this is so high. It's actually going to be a problem. I think. Aquaps is in 20, being 34, 33, 32. Um, this thing's only got about 40 seconds of fuel in it. So yeah, you can see our mass is shifting right, right to the front. Now we're going to drop down our speedy, speedy. Um, yeah, come on. Let's have a look. What are we doing? Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Be good. Be good. Be good get me up there am I gonna have enough delta V am I gonna have enough time I think we're gonna have we be okay with the time because the thrust is now coming back quite significantly um, it's whether we have enough delta V on this thing actually I thought we'd have enough but maybe I'm up under cooking things a little bit no 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 I think we are I think we're gonna be okay right maybe maybe okay maybe not maybe not okay actually there we go. oh that course we've got residuals right we'll do that fire that engine up and then this can just uh, this can just finish us off so almost like it was planned so we're not going to leave too much garbage in space now this doesn't have its own avionics unit so we are going to end up leaving that in space potentially uh, but we'll we'll discard it in such a way that it's not a problem no we're not going to discard it in such a way it's not a problem we're just going to discard it and then hope that it's okay i think right i'm going to take this up to 300 um our inclination isn't brilliant but you know, it's, it's terrible. Um, can we just, can I do that? Is that going to help? Will that help it at all? Maybe not. Maybe make it worse, in fact. Um, right, we'll do that. Turn that up there. That's okay. Right, let's get the solar panels out. Um, yeah, there we go. There and there. And then these ones here and here. Let's have a look right now. How are we looking for the power situation? We can we can get rid of that actually for now. How are we looking for the power situation? Let's have a look. Um, electric charge is going up. Okay, so the solar power panels, even though they're occluding each other at the moment in the current orientation, yeah, not brilliant, but they're, they're, they're okay. Right. Um, we could deploy that. I don't need to at the moment. Um, we we actually do want to deploy this. We want to extend our antennas. We have a couple of antennas here that are just going to act to uh, to extend our range and hopefully make sure that we've got communications. We currently have it through Bermuda, but we may lose uh, signal. So yeah, uh, we've got vessel completed. Oh, it's the dog craft, is it? Yeah, Dan Dawn. Okay, All right. Let's have a look. Oh, big zoom out. Um, I want to. You know, we'll just get the we'll get Mech Jeb to do it. So Mechy Jebby. Oh, the other thing I need to do is I do need to uh, activate our RCS. There we go. The RCS should work. All right, we're gonna we're gonna um, maneuver planet. We're actually gonna circularize. Uh, where are we? Circularize at the next apoapsis. So create the node. How much delta V is that gonna require from me? It shouldn't need much. Thirty six. Wonderful. So we may use this just to bring our relative inclination to the moon to be to be as close to zero as possible. That might be an idea. 
it makes it easier for our, our future flights to target the moon then instead of this um, and there's the top stage there that's just going to fly around right let's um yeah let's let's move in a bit of time or we're going to go to the required position are we going to have electric charge yes we do wonderful right we're going to now execute that is it going to do it turn the rcs on we have rcs firing and then this top rcs will not fire until we've actually decoupled so we're just using this bottom rcs at the moment the one on the transfer sort of stage um let's just check we are gaining yeah the electricity is staying up we don't we you know we're not actually supporting other other craft and things which this i think potentially could do if we send up um, a dog craft to this though i think its fuel cell will still be still be used 50 percent of the time um to basically back up the whole the whole station uh, but we can always turn the avionics off and things like that if we need to um and just let it drift around without avionics this is very slow very slow is it gonna is it gonna swing around in time is the question you can see what we have actually done is we've taken off the avionics ring that was underneath here um so we've actually all the avionics is coming from the station there um is it getting any is, oh are we getting morning light from this let's have a look um no we're actually starting to lose electricity so let's actually have a look what's uh what's the old situation with this um it believes it has electric charge for 21 hours 21 hours okay that's good uh, perpetual food water oxygen for 140 days what we could do is we could turn off uh habitation or that there turn that off there we go so we've turned off the o2 pressure controller and we can turn off that as well and just let it just let it chillax out um because we don't need it we don't need them on at the moment we don't have crew on board um, of course, I'm trying to think, was it was it one of the Salute stations where it had toxic air and then there was all sorts of issues and they had to Google go in and flush it out and things like that. But that was fun, wasn't it? Normally, you, I think they send these things up pressurized so that they're, they're, they maintain the pressure and the, the environment inside is designed to be pressurized so they don't like it to, to go into vacuum. Um, are we going to fire at some point? It'd be really nice if we did. Really nice if we fired an engine. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fire the uh, thrusters. Yeah, you, you, you're doing my head in now. Just there we go. Wonderful. Is this going to put us in a circular orbit? I bet it doesn't. Uh, burn time four seconds. Well, one minute after. I mean, it's just there we go. That's not terrible. It's not brilliant. Um, in an ideal world, we'd actually fix that. But anyway, let's have a look. Um, we're here, so let's have a look here. Can we just can we change our? There's an easier way of doing this actually. Let's do here. I'm going to rendezvous planet, pull it across to one side, and then we could actually just do, <laughs> um, where are we? Align planes. What's that going to cost us? 62. Oh, that's nothing. That's nice, actually. So we know if we're half a degree off and we're in a circular orbit, it's about 62 meters per second. Um, okay, so we're going to actually, yeah, we're, going to, we're going to execute that. Now, of course, I'm doing this plane change without making the uh, apoapsis parapsis perfect primarily because um because with the rcs of just this tail section it's actually gonna it's gonna affect our apoapsis parapsis it's gonna because we're off off kilter thrusting and the way kerbal works it's actually gonna work against us a little bit there we get a bit of prograde retrograde stuff going on occasionally um so we're gonna just let that happen and uh, what we could do is we could speed this up because it takes forever this is obviously quite a slow thing you know um, I do wonder, I think MechJeb now takes into account the amount of RCS it has before it starts doing these moves so it doesn't overshoot. If it doesn't, it feels as though it does. Um, you used to, in older versions of MechJeb, it used to overshoot and it would be backwards and forwards, yo-yoing, and oh, it's horrendous. All right, let's have a look if it's going to do it. And it should fire the RCS first before it fires the main engines on this one. Of course, we are going to time warp once we get there. There we go, it's going to zero it out. Once we're nice and zeroed, it should time warp. There we go. Um, let's check the old power supply again. Uh, it's not really dipping down. Of course, we're now end on with the solar panels, which is a little annoying, but yeah, we can live with that. Um, there we go. Is it going to fire itself? Is it going to need me to do it? It's firing the RCS and then not got balanced fuel yet that's interesting how is the fuel not 
that fuel took a long time to settle. I was going to say because it's upside down, but it's not. It's that's not, not the issue. Um, so we have solar panel exposure about fifteen, to what seventeen percent, and we are we're doing not badly actually. We start we're charging, which is good. Um, if I rotate the craft a little bit, if we do a little bit of this, let's do that around nineteen percent, twenty percent, thirty-five, forty. Yeah, that's that's not bad at all actually. There we go, and just slow that down. Okie doke. Brilliant. Thank you. So stop now. Stop now. All right, now I could put this uh, this station into a perfect circular orbit. I don't feel the need to. Not at the moment anyway. We're going to leave this attached for now um, because we don't have any power drain from it. Um, it's storable propellant. We might as well leave it on station. And um, we may want to do a little bit of station keeping with it in the future. We haven't, we don't know. Um, depending upon what comes up first, we, we may be docking to these ports here. You can tell, however, they are available, they're accessible. We do still have our struts on either side of them. So we could do that. If we want to dock to the, the end there, we, of course, would need to lose that. But I think we'll probably end up trying to dock to these here. And I think that's it. So I think next time we're going to be looking at um, probably, I hope, we're going to be looking at sending crew up to here, uh, maybe doing a, a long-term mission. We have our mission to land on Mars. That's going to come up next mission in the next episode, definitely. But uh, from me, until next time, have a great one.